Welcome everyone to the Art So Wonderful Cable Show. We are so glad that you joined us today. I'm Candace Owens and I uh, work with our co-host and we're excited for everyone to join us today and I will hand it over to Bruce to do his introduction. And I'm Bruce, <laughs> Art So Wonderful and I'm glad to have um, Candace Owens as our co-host as um, PoetryPartner.com and our guest today is Jordan Curls. Dot com. So um, go ahead, Candice, take us. Oh, <laughs> um, so we're so excited for Jordan to join us today. And I guess I'm going to pass it over to her. Name's Jordan Curls. She is a musician and many other things, but we will let her introduce herself and kind of just go over what she does. And um, we're so glad for you joining us today, Jordan. Hi, yes. absolutely. I'm excited to be here. Uh, yeah, as they said, my name is Jordan Curls. I'm an artist, creative director. Uh, I don't even know what else to describe. <laughs> uh, songwriter, all of the above. Um, I recently moved to New York. I'm finishing out my degree at the New School. I went to Howard. Uh, I'm about to put out my debut project in the next coming months, where I'll be able to then go on a bit of a tour after that. So I'm excited for that. And yeah, is, is that? I hope that like. I don't know, mm -hmm. answer the questions. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess my question, I'm gonna start out with a simple question, Jordan. What what drew you to music? Like what made you feel like that was your calling? And I admire you for doing what you can do to live your dreams. So kudos for that, uh, for doing that. Thank you. It takes a lot of audacity to do what I do. So I always appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, my relationship with music, I feel, was less of a choice than it was a calling. Um, I never made the inherent choice to pick up a microphone. I was kind of singing at like, the moment that I could sing. And um, I was playing piano before I knew anything about music, before I knew it had any training or anything. I just had always felt more drawn to this sound. And um, I felt like that was the way that I could best express myself in the world, was to nice that's nice <laughs> appreciate you and um wow i'm just gonna say um i met jordan curls down at the burlington jazz fest 40th jazz fest big deal for burlington vermont and um you know so that's one of the biggest probably one of the biggest things um, um, vermont have is the burlington jazz fest and it was on a um, waterfront in Burlington, um, Lake Champlain Waterfront, and um, this gigantic stage, and I saw this lady walking around, looking all like, I said, damn, I said, you look just like a queen, and she's like, she started laughing and stuff, you know, like, you know, thanking me, you know, and I said, uh, what's your name? She said, Jordan Curls, and she said, I'm gonna be performing on that big stage today. I said, no, yeah, <laughs> and so, it was so, I was honored just to meet her after I learned out, you know, she was a performer because uh, that's a, it was a big ass, it was a big stage. It's a big stage that she was performing on among many actors, many um, performers, uh, and also um, headline performers. And so she was up there, man. And so it was like, wow, you know. And so in my mind, I'm thinking, she she needs to perform for stuff we do. You know, we've done over 700 events, and she needs to perform in all the different genres or venues that we put on through the years. And that um, how wonderful it is to see beautiful black lady, you know, who, person who looked like me. First of all, in Vermont, which is you know second white state in America, you know, just to be able, just to, be able to meet her, and I'm like, wow. So I had to make sure that I, you know I got a tenfold whatever. But I'm telling you, when we heard her perform on that stage, oh man. Wow, incredible, you know what I mean? Like your voice is like so unique. I know I can talk about a little few voices that might sound like hers, but not really, you know what I mean? She's got her own unique style and a different types of genres, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, she, her sound is different in a lot of different ways, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you can hear a lot of Indy Ari, you can hear Erica Badu, a little Swiss, a little hear some Mary J. Blige and that, you know, you got a lot of hip hop, a little hip hop stuff, a lot of different, you know, some old school old, um, artists in there. Um, wow, you know, Sarah Vaughn, all kind of, you know, good, oh man, so 
she's got this unique um, chemistry that's within her. So Jordan Curls, and I call you Jordan Curls because every time I talk to you, like, yeah, my name is Jordan Curls. I'm like, I ain't getting that twisted. I'm calling you Jordan Curls, baby. So Jordan Curls, what do you think is your genre? Well, what is? I don't know. I, you, you might know your genre. You know what? what you know who? You know what do you? What's your? I know your style is so, is so unique and different from a lot of artists your age. Oh, sorry. There you go. I would say my genre is like the love child of neo soul jazz and hip hop. Um, I, I really can't say it's just any one genre just because it pulls from so many others um, that I, I really, I wouldn't know how to define it as one. So I would say a combination of those three most primarily. Um, definitely some rock as well, but I can't go out right and say rock because it's more like influenced by rock than it is like a straight rock sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Man, just to let you know, we put over over 50 rock shows here in, in, in Vermont. So if you ever want to do some rock, some some rock shows, whatever, I got you. You know what I mean? We that's that's one of the biggest uh, things we do, do here. Last time we put on a rock show, we had over 800 college students show up at this memorial. Oh, nice! The annex, yeah, man. It was so amazing. Look, they was lying around the block like we had like a. Fish or Guns and Roses or somebody, you know, any type of rock, you know, soft rock, you know, you know, or hard rock or even metal, like we was put on a, one of those. And actually, our event was like, like soft rock with um, the taste of like um, the hip hop, you know, and um, it was a big deal, you know. And it was like called a paint party. So my interns were like on this big stage, like spraying. Crayola paint on people as as we was, as we was jamming and Red Bull was our sponsor and it was a big deal. They was loving. They was all and all our sponsors gave us all the white T-shirts for them to put on so they can get the paint on. They loved that white paint being sprayed on and they had a great time and it was a fun event. You know, we had um, atomic sound um, sound system speakers which was bigger than I could still feel the vibrations in within my bones right now. Were from those speakers. I mean, they were gigantic. You, can, you know, I'm talking about those, those, like high grounds. I mean, like um, um, jazz fast speakers. Those things that like knock you over, boy, for real. So we had a great time. And so uh, yeah, so so you so um, did you graduate from Howard University? No, I recently transferred. Say that again. I recently transferred from Howard. Okay, awesome. Thank you for going to Howard University. I appreciate that. You know, one of, um, of course. Yeah. It was an amazing experience. How was that experience? How was Howard? How was your experience there? Yeah. It was a very actualizing experience. Um, you, you kind of find your place in the world as a black professional and just as a black person. Um, and it's really invaluable, the lessons that they teach you there, just to how to insert yourself in a space without inhibitions, mm -hmm. um, you know, without complexity, overly complex things, you know, it, it's really just, it teaches you how to remove any, again, inhibition that you have that is given to us as Black people in America. And it teaches you how to live life and maneuver without those strengths and those weights. You mm -hmm. cannot find that at any other type of university except an HBCU. So that is why I will always appreciate my time at Howard and anybody that goes to any HBCU. Um, I, I now am in a space where I'm more so focused on my music now that I'm able to take those lessons and move forward. So I'm really grateful that Howard endowed me with that knowledge, especially yeah. so young. You know, it's not a privilege that a lot of Black people get to have in America. No doubt, man. Howard University is one of our historical black colleges, and um, it's not many. So how many how many historical black colleges is it? And you got, like, is it, I, don't, I can't think of the number. I should have looked it up. How many historical black colleges um, are there? I know it's Howard University, then you got Spelman. You got, you got, is it two dozen? 
Yeah, there's a few. There's a few dozen. I'm I'm not exactly sure just because I'm not I don't know how many colleges there are. I know I'm aware of like the amount of universities. Um, but overall I know that there's several dozen and a lot in the South as well. Mm -hmm. So I like it. I'm looking at your you know, we know we have art you know we have art galleries and we do art and murals everywhere as around Vermont. And so mm -hmm. I'm looking at your necklace, I like Nefertiti's or something on your on your necklace, your pendant there on your necklace there. Who's that? Oh, you saw my necklace? I'm looking at it like <laughs> Nefertiti's or something. <laughs> Queen. Yeah, nice. Nice. That's nice. nice yeah, thank you. So what's your questions, Candice? Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I don't really know. I guess just I listened to some of your music uh, before the show, like just to kind of get a little bit of your background. And I don't know why it reminded me. And this, you gave so many different genres, but you reminded me of kind of like um. I, so I'm 40, so that's a little bit of an age gap between us, but I listened to a lot of Lauren Hill when I was growing up, um, mm. and she helped me through a lot of times in that my teenage years, right, because it had that good soul music to kind of keep me level-headed, and I kind of like that about your music, too. I feel like, you know, I like the fact that you write your own songs, and um, Bruce also said you do poetry, too, so it's like, what... Um, is there like a certain thing that you're just like, okay, I need to write a song about this. Do you plan it? Or is it kind of just like everything else? It just comes natural and you just channel and do you just get up there and, and do what you feel like you're supposed to do? Or I'm just curious. Cause I've never, I don't know what a singer. That's a whole total different genre to me. So. Yeah, no, it's a really good question for me. It really isn't a formula yet. I, I believe I'll, I'll get there one day. <laughs> um, it, it really is just, whatever comes in the moment. Sometimes I have an agenda. Sometimes I'm like, no, I want to write a song about what I'm going through and I'm going to find an analogy to compare it to, an allegory of sorts. Sometimes it's like, I'm just playing chords on a piano and then I just start singing what's on my heart. Uh, sometimes I write a poem that I then try to turn into a song. Sometimes I even started to pick up this new habit um, through the jazz program that I did at Howard, we would have, um, transcriptions that we'd have to learn, which is like a jazz solo that you had to learn and then you had to write lyrics to it. So I don't exactly remember what it was called. We did it for transcriptions, but the whole process itself has a whole nother word and I'm blanking right now and my teacher would hate me for that, but that's besides the point. Um, we used to write lyrics to that. So one thing that I've started to have more fun doing is, you know, learning more about song structure. In, in me learning more about song structure, I am now like listening to some songs. I listen to like the melodies. I'll listen to the words. I'll put my own words, write a new melody, and rearrange a new song around it. And it forces me to express ideas with just more of a prose, of a poetic prose. Um, and so it's really cool. It's been a fun thing for me to do. Uh, Cause it, it'll be, it literally be like old, old songs that I'm like, it's too wordy. Cause you know, doing poetry as well, it's definitely a, a balancing act of trying to make sure to express a story in a way that is not spoon feeding everybody the answers and you know, the solutions and everything, but is also still, I don't know, digestible enough that you would want to hear it. And it's not like reading a cookbook, you know? Mm. Um, so it has allowed me to express ideas in a more concise, rhythmic, and just melodic way. So I think it really just depends. I know I named like five different things that I do, but I promise you, like I kind of just rotate between those different approaches. I'm sure I'll try new ones, see what sticks most, but more than anything, to do what feels less a task. So I know that sometimes if I try to be like, I want to say this, it's harder to do that so I'll try and find a way to make it less, feel less difficult. I'll try and find a way to approach it in a more creative way, you know, because the funny thing about creativity now, I'll, this will be the last thing I say because I'm a bit rambling now. The funny thing about creativity is the moment that it gets hard, you can approach it in a creative way. It, it's kind of like a vortex, you know, the more creative that you get, the more alternative the outcome is. And it, it just becomes something that you would have never known because you have to pivot within the realm of creativity to be able to pull something out of it. And... I think that's that's been a very, I don't know, just cool realization, mm -hmm. to say the least. You know, you know. Really insightful. Thank you. Yeah, it's really yeah. good. So Jordan, um, Jordan Curls, um, mm -hmm. 
like not many people your age um still kind of um i mean i don't really know I, I can't think of nobody actually even if even a famous artist who sounds like you now, i mean nobody should like sound you know i'm not saying you should sound like somebody but at your age you sing the songs that you sing and then it seems like all these young artists performing artists and all the wonderful things that they do don't like they, no don't don't mix no um you know like the old school to their um to their songs or to their you know to their lyrics or to you know to the beat you know no they the beats they don't use are, are not the beats that you know no the love songs that they sing that really are no love songs you know and so your your songs is like heartful and feel to the heart and it, and it feels like um songs like I grew up you know kind of grew up with you know what I mean like you know you can you can feel your your songs you know like Teddy Pendergrass and Luther and you know, you know like um, Candace say Lauren Hill. These people like that, you can feel you within those songs. And young, younger, young people your age today are just not doing that. Why you? Why you think they don't? You know, don't, don't even put these these um, older artists like even on their hook. I mean, I think they could do. I think you know if they put something like James Brown on their hook or something like that. They they have songs would be better. But what do you what do you think? <laughs> yeah. Why you uh, think, yeah, I think it's there's a lot of answers I could give to this question, so I'll try and keep it very concise. <laughs> um, art imitates life, and I think that for a lot of people my age, young people, well, first things first, I think that there are a lot of young artists like me that are making very uplifting grounded music that is inspired by generations before them. I know that there are a lot of them out there. I listen to them. They're just not as popular because again, it's, I think the industry, while it is very saturated, much like every other industry, it just gets harder to find real amongst the loudest, you know? Because um, the empty barrel makes the most noise, you know? So it's kind of hard to find those artists that are doing this more for an artistic pursuit rather than an egoic rise. <laughs> um, however, I think that if you do listen to most music that is reflective of just an, a person's ego rather than, I don't know, trying to change society in any sort of way, then it's going to influence you to make music like that as well. So I think it's kind of a question of what came first, the chicken or the egg? Like mm. what came first? Was it the fact that music began to literally change from like a more analog state to a digital state in the early 2000s that then inspired everybody to start making music like that? And then it just kind of like, I don't know, it was an avalanche effect from there? Or is it the fact that like, I don't know, the economy is not in the best space right now. And if you notice, whenever there's a recession, the music kind of reflects the times. If you notice, like, any time the economy is bad, we get recession music. <laughs> and go all the way back to the 1920s. It's hilarious. So I think we're, our music right now is literally reflective of the times and the fact that, you know, social media is so big and, you know, everything's super digital now. So I think the music reflecting that is inevitable. And I think that it is too... It is up to the artist if they want to be loud or if they want to be, I don't know, heard. And there's a difference between that. Mm -hmm. I get it. Yeah. So um, you had to, wow. So you, I mean, not many people get to perform on the Betty Carter's jazz, you know, Millennium stage, you know what I'm saying? But you did. And uh, I sent that uh, link to uh, Candace and we both were like, Damn, and I sent it to some other people too, some of our sponsors, and they love it, you know what I mean? So how was that experience, the Betty Carter Jazz Millennium on being on the Millennium stage? How was that? Yeah. Oh, man. If you, if you only knew, when I first moved to D.C. in 2018, there was like a list, right? There was like three things on that list that I wrote that I wanted to do while I lived in D.C., mm -hmm. And I've done two out of those three things. <laughs> wow, nice. One, I wanted to perform at Yard Fest for Howard University, mm -hmm. which I was able to do um, this past October and the one before that, except it was like Yard Fest that I went to perform at. Um, sorry, I'm getting a phone call. Let me end that. Am I still, can y'all still hear me? Yep, still hear you. 
Okay, perfect. Okay, awesome. Um, one of that was to perform at Yard Fest. The other one was to perform at the Kennedy Center. And the third one was to put out my album, which I'm going to do within the next few months. So I'm really excited to be able to finally knock off that list. Um, but to say the least, I had wanted to perform there for five years. I literally was trying to create a career, build it up so that they would even want me to perform on that stage. Like I didn't have a career when I wanted to perform at the Kennedy Center. So I literally had to create the path that I wanted to be able to trek. And it was just, you have no idea. Like I, I went in like the fetal position when I found out that I got into that program. <laughs> there was so many things happening nice. in my life that was letting me know that I, so many things were unsure at that time. Mm -hmm. And to have that stamp of like approval, like we see your efforts, we see your merits and we want you to come here and we don't want you to just perform on the stage. We want to offer a residency. Like that was just, oh wow. man. Like it just, it did wonders for my spirit. It did wow. wonders for me mentally. It did wonders for me. Like it just was, I don't know, the light at the end of the tunnel. Sometimes it gets very detail oriented with music and he's focused on the changes jazz that's a jazz term the, the changes being the chords right when you focus on the changes sometimes it's harder to see the bigger picture and when you have moments like that where they not only ask you but then now you're preparing and you're putting together your first compositions for this and you're working with some of the best musicians that you've ever met and you're mentored by some of the baddest musicians the jazz musicians have all time like it's just a second to none experience i made sure to write down everything i learned i made sure to stay connected with most all of them well the mentors especially but especially since moving to new york i've been able to just come across some of the folks that i did the program with and that has been amazing to be able to support them at their shows and everything and looking forward to working on some music together it just if you can't tell it meant a lot so wow. um i'm wow. very forever grateful and forever molded by that experience. If anything, final thing I'll say on this, it taught me, part of the reason I didn't put out my album yet, I was ready, I was in a position to drop the album maybe a few weeks after I did that program. But having done that program, having been around, it's just like a certain echelon of music and, and commitment to a craft, I realized I would be doing myself a disservice to not mm -hmm factor in what I learned here into my project. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm doing now. Wow. That's what I've been doing for the past year. That's mm -hmm. what I've been learning from doing shows from here to Vermont, here being North Carolina, that's where I currently am. <laughs> um, that's what I've learned from being able to connect with people like you, Bruce, with people like Jason Moran, who runs the Betty Carter program. Like it, it's just, it's been amazing. And yeah, as I mentioned earlier, it takes a lot of audacity to do what I do. But I don't know, that audacity is sort of enabled by people believing in you and, and putting you into programs like that in the first place and putting you on those stages. And, you know, when they see you perform at the Bur uh, Burlington Jazz Festival, they offer you to come and talk on their show, you know, like it's just little things like that. So I'm really grateful for the role that y'all even play in my evolution as an artist. It means a lot. No, right, right. And we, we're very happy to play a, a, whatever role we can play. And I'm, I'm meeting with the mayor later on today, and I'm going to be in some of her team, and I'm going to, like, be talking about you, and then we're going to somehow I'm gonna, um, see how they can sponsor you coming. I'm so glad you're in New York now. Damn, Jordan, because you're, like, right around Thank the corner you. just across the tracks, baby. You know what I mean? Like I you, know. You know, it's a, it's a fast drive, you know what I mean? It's like closer to Vermont. <laughs> no doubt, one step closer. And I tell, I know we're gonna tear it up here because everybody's gonna love you. I'm giving, I'm oh, yeah. Everybody's gonna love you here, you know, because first of all, oh, yeah, we, we got plans. We got plans. I don't, you know, I don't know if you know this, Candace, but we got plans. Bruce has been plotting on the whole state. <laughs> <laughs> she knows, Candace. Imagine. Candace, Candace, you know, <laughs> we were talking about it, said, yeah. So, um, um, so, um. So, so you got you're going to be working on your album, and it's coming up um, next couple of months or whatever. Um, or and so, how many songs you have on it? Right now, thirteen. Woo! 11, Damn. Eleven That's full songs, two interludes, and that is to be representative of my birthday, which is eleven thirteen. Yeah, and um, your band is tight, man. In the band that we was hearing, the bands. 
They all play. Oh, they, yeah. all, they all win. They they enjoy it. They, they every note they they hit, they be like you can see the enjoyment in their face. I mean, you can see them how they feel about the instrument and sound that comes out of their instrument. And so I'm glad. And I know those are all professional people, people who you probably known, people from who went to Howard maybe, and just people who just a part of like the Betty Carter stuff and and um, all the different um, things that you, all the ways that you learn about who you are and your music. And so <coughs> you, you really learned a lot. I mean, you learned from the best. And so you are the best. And so, um, so spirituality, you got that flow. That's another part of your music, you know, that, that godly, that high power that you have, that, that flow, that message that you probably present to people and then the words you use, the light, the light, you know what I mean? That's what we're talking about, right? Get that light shining bright, baby, and let, let it come out yeah. and share with others so they can feel the light too and, 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 be, and they can become bright too. And so thank you for sharing, doing that. You know, I really appreciate that. So, so right now, I'm going to ask uh, Candace to talk about um, our, what's coming. It's going to take a few minutes, and we're going to close the show, okay? Jordan, t Candace, talk about what's coming up for us. All right. Um, so we have a, uh, another podcast that's coming out April the 29th, where mm -hmm. we're going to have our winner of our previous contest that's going to join us, and she is going to read. Um, it's actually from India. So they're going to read their poem um, on the cave, on the podcast, and we have another contest that starts May first and ends May thirty first, and that is going to be we want I think we talked about it on the last podcast, and that's going to be for and the theme's faith. So we want you to write a poem about what faith means to you, whatever that may be, um, and that's kind of the goal with that. And then we have a more shows that are going to be coming, and hopefully Jordan will be a part of that, and you'll just keep seeing us all work together. Um, Absolutely. I, I did. And by the way, before I end, I just have to say, I admire you so much because you're like going against the grain out here and making your dreams come true. So kudos to you for not letting anyone tell you that you can't do what you want to do because um, anybody can do what they want to do. You just got to stay on the narrow path. As we all talk about, you have to stay and, and can stick to it. And it sounds like, you know, you've had a lot of wins and that's huge. So thank you again for sharing that because it really has touched me today. So I'm glad that I was able to to join and be a part of this. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely, thank you I so did, much. you're welcome. Um, I don't know if he, Bruce is ready to close. I know that yeah. he did want yeah. me to, you got, yeah, you do you want me to read the poem now or are yeah. we good, Bruce? Do Go right ahead. Go ahead. Um, I got so I picked one of um, my poems that I, it's on my website, poetrypioneer.com, but it's called, um, Can Anyone Say We Love the World We Live In? That's kind of long, but that's the title. Um, and so I'll go ahead and start. Can anyone say that we love the world we live in? Can you say that no matter how dark the world seems, the light will always win? Can you ask yourself if denying the truth is a form of sin? Can we ask each other, how do we fix this and where do we begin? You can ask and ask, but no answers you will find. It is not in others online, but it is actually within. We can all treat each other with compassionate actions and like we are all family or friends. Who said the world has to go dark and eventually end? Who says we can't start over, but never forget where we've been? Stop focusing on all the, focusing on all the bad things in the world and start around to look around and grin. Stop asking who, what, why, and where, and start saying when. Nice, nice. So that's you can see all her uh, Candace Owens poetry on uh, poetry dot com. She's my uh, partner, my business partner, and um, Jordan. You can see you on Jordan, Jordan Curls. Is it JordanCurls dot com? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. JordanCurls dot com. Right. Jordan. Yes. <laughs> And you can see us on artsowonderful.com. dot com, and so we want everybody who's listening on our show to uh, tune in and learn about all of us. I know we this show has been around since two thousand three, so we, a lot of people know about us. But um, Jordan, um, you want you got a poem you want to take us out with? You got a po some poem you got? You you got some poem or or a little acapella or something you want to take us out with? <laughs> He's like, don't do this to me. I mean, <laughs> I have some stuff written if you want me to read something. Hell yeah. Can you read one, some, one thing to take us out with? Take us home? Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> go, you go, okay. girl. You go right ahead. Go right ahead. You, we listening. We ready. On which I have so many topics though. Like you have to choose a topic. If you want me to say something, you have to choose a topic. Faith. Go ahead. Faith. You yeah, faith. 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 Or, faith. Okay. 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 Faith. faith. Well, I do have a song that mentions that, so I can I can do that one. Oh well, I got you. I got you. Go ahead. Here's one. It's called Awaken. Um, and yeah, this was just kind of talking about my awakening spiritually that helps solidify my relationship with my faith. Um, yeah, so I dreamt of a lucid feeling, a phenomenal healing, one cradle to a sky beneath the triple moon. And I woke and like a bird set free, I now scoff at the cage, that which concealed its reveal until my escape. And now I let faith decide my fate because bird's eyes views reveals worlds the mind can't create. As I see our roads have now diverged into separate planes, despite visions they'd always remain, I know we are not the same and I see we do not relate, but I still gaze into the elusive mirror love creates. Divergence I would consider as obedience marks a private sinner. This is an open book, a heartless sleeve. May our truth reign through me. Nice. That's wow. so nice. Hey, beautiful. <laughs> uh, uh, all you need Thank is some you. beats behind that, baby. You like, we got a whole song right there. So, um, yeah. take, Candace, take us out. Candace, take us home. Take us out. All right. Close well, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And we hope you enjoy our show. And you keep stay tuned for more. And you will definitely see more of Jordan Curls uh, coming and much more. And so stay tuned for events that we'll have coming up. And um, we hope everyone has a blessed day. And we will keep holding the light strong in this world today. So. We got this, right, guys? We're going to keep it. Yeah, going right, we do. We're going to do Thank you, Thank Jordan Curls. So we'll be talking. Have a good rest of your day. Bye. 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 Bye.